Actually, you should be reading this because he says, Hello, Dave. Oh. My name is Lewis, and my question is, can I start IGF-1 LR3 immediately after using ACG and modified GRF 1 through 29? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know why not. This is a, a short question. I guess it's going to get a short answer because um, I don't know what the issue would be uh, starting one with the other. Uh, the ACG really has no real effect in this cascade of hormones. Um, you know, ACG we know stimulates, it's an analog of luteinizing hormone, it would stimulate the gonads, uh, but IGF-1 LR3 is a, we'll call it a version of IGF-1 that lasts longer in the body and uh, a little more stable. And so guys use it to help, uh, and it's a, it's a powerful anabolic. So guys will use that instead of maybe growth hormone or growth hormone analogs uh, because, it, again, it lasts longer and it's, it's pretty doggone effective for that reason and others at putting glycogen in the cell. You know, I, I'd say it's way safer than insulin. I, 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 I don't ever recommend anyone using insulin except for diabetics. Okay, of, if they have to, I know. I didn't want to go there because yeah. I don't want to have the argument. Guys do things all the time. And as I said, I'm a registered libertarian. But from a medical standpoint, especially, I mean, even in educated hands, people with diabetes who've been taught and taught again and can check their, their blood glucose and know what to do if they overdose the insulin, et cetera, uh, they have problems. Um, so it's definitely, I, I don't recommend it. In this case, you're not dealing with that sort of danger, certainly immediately but uh, in the long term we've had we have studies and they're epidemiological and they're correlative we don't know the mechanism of action but and it's up open to debate I just am opening that door for our viewers um, elevated levels of IG, IGF-1 are in some studies correlated with um, and it makes sense cancers well if you have cancer you know you don't want to pour fuel in the fire something's gonna make it grow more and faster Although you can make a case that if you're having trouble with chemotherapy, which works by killing the faster growing cells faster than the slower growing cells, you might actually use that as an adjunct tool to help chemotherapy work. But that, mm. that goes into all kinds of theory and opens up you know a whole bunch of other stuff that people I'm sure don't want to open up. But the point is, it, this doesn't come without a potential risk is what I'm saying. Uh, the association with cancer and some other diseases, uh, heart disease, but let's just call it um, earlier morbidity and mortality have been associated in some studies with elevate, elevated levels of IGF-1, which can occur from just growth hormone uh, use or you know endogenous or exogenous, right? The way we eat and, and other things can raise that supplements. And that's what, you know, the modified uh, uh, Growth releasing hormone, I think is what he's saying, like the Sermorlin or something like that. Uh, the first 29 uh, amino acids, um, that's one of the oldest ones, and that's telling your body to produce its own growth hormone, if you will, um, to switch to exogenous after endogenous. Is there any contraindication? Is there anything I could think of that would, would go wonky after that? No, it's just, you know, you've just spent all this time getting your body to produce its own, and then you're gonna shut that down fairly rapidly by using an exogenous form of, of a metabolite of, well, it's not, no, <coughs> excuse me. The way the body, so the liver, no, nah, I'm gonna give us too much technical information here, mm -hmm. but effectively what would happen is this would slow your body's own production of growth hormone and IGF-1, okay, by introducing exogenous IGF-1 LR3. Gotcha. I think that's what the bottom line he wants to know. But no, there's no contraindication to it. So you, you can, I guess, in this case. Gotcha. Very cool. Hello there. Am a I am a steroid user, 12 cycles so far. And I try always to PCT, yet I don't see me back again as, in parentheses, stable condition. It's always up and down in regards to prostate enlargement and shrinkage and testicle size. But... There is a condition that is remaining the same, breathing problems, symptoms, shortness of breath, tightness of chest, can't even play 30 seconds with kids without feeling that I should rest. All heart tests are okay, lung is okay, blood pressure is okay. No doctor is giving me a solid answer. Most say it's in my head and I need to take it easy. And this is funny. 
I relate this problem to the results of steroids use, but it's only my opinion. What should I do? Adwad al Hakan. Uh, this is another tough one again. I, I wish, I mean, I really do wish that I could, you know, <laughs> get in front of these patients and, and ask them more questions and get maybe some more studies underneath our belt so we can figure these things out because <coughs> there are a lot of unanswered questions. And um, one of them is, for example, how much weight did you put on as well while you were using steroids? Because mm -hmm. people forget that going from, you know, 180 to 210. That's a good question. That's a, you know, I mean, guys do that in cycles, particularly young guys. Uh, this gentleman didn't say how old he is, but, um, you know, 30 pounds of extra weight and, you know, look at it as a percentage. Takes something to get used to. You that. know, I know when I'm playing tennis, if I drop even five pounds or riding a bike, it makes a big difference in my heart rate, my, my breathing, obviously. So that's the first thing I'd ask is, have you taken that into account? Because that could be your answer right there. Um, and then you talk about, you know, shortness of breath, tightness of chest, you think of anxiety as one thing leading to another. He's got this condition, which is because he put on too much weight and then he's getting worried about it because he starts to breathe too, too hard or harder than he thought he was supposed to breathe. And then he gets anxious and that leads to tight chest and more shortness of breath. Um, the good thing is, although he said, it says all heart tests, I don't know what that means, mm -hmm. but if he runs through the gamut, you know, whether it's a, um, a uh, perfusion test, you know, with and without exercise, in other words. And, um, I mean, not just a simple EKG, that would not be enough to satisfy, I would hope, most doctors. But if the perfusion test is okay, and, for example, a CT angiogram showed there's no blockage in the heart, and and an EKG shows there's no electrical issues either, okay. Uh, the lungs are okay, what does that mean? You know, you don't have um, any lung disease, you know, COPT, uh, emphysema, um, you know, uh, bronchitis, which is not the lung I realize, but you know, you, it's just, too, it's too complicated. To just look at this and go, Oh, sure. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but assuming those things are okay and blood pressure is okay too, he says, um, then I don't know what I would suggest, but I don't think that the problem is necessarily, uh, because of steroids per se, but indirectly related because it might help him put on a lot of weight. I would love to know the answer to this. And if, if um, Awad is is listening, maybe he we could do an update. I don't know how we could, you know, why not? We're getting we all these questions. Set, we set, yeah, uh, we, yeah, we'll do it and, and go into more detail. Yeah. Again, I can't give medical advice, but again, I can always give more possibilities, but th these are a little bit too wide open that we could talk and I can ramble. Yeah on and on here about what the possibilities are, but I don't think it's going to help people much to, to, to go off on that many tangents. But. Yeah. I, well, I think the weight gain is a good, um, is a good, is it's a, just a guess. It's a good guess. Um, but I think people sometimes, a lot of time, if they do, you know, steroid cycles, they're a little bit more, um, <clears throat> paranoid, you know, something is off a little bit. You feel, Oh my God, you know, I've felt like that before. <laughs> you feel like, Oh my God, this is a, you know, like, you well, know not, I mean? not, not to give ourselves kudos here, but that's that's part of why we're doing this is because, yeah. you know, I live in that generation. I'm 57 now, yeah. um, and you had all the propaganda that oh, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, like you masturbate, you're going to go blind. You know, oh my god, you know, uh, <laughs> you take steroids and yeah, you're you're going to be yeah, impotent for the rest of your life, and it leads to yeah, heart attacks and all that stuff. That, that, that's kind of sad because then, you know, I mean, I argue to this day, uh, the more I learn that stress is one of our biggest killers. So give somebody some misinformation, let them stress about it. Well, then, yeah, it could be self-fulfilling for that reason alone. Yeah. But we're trying to educate so that, you know, people don't go through that uh, unnecessary gnashing of teeth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if we can help there, you know, I, I hope I hope we can. Cause, yeah. yeah. Let us know how much weight, how much gain you, uh, you, uh, you how much weight you gain. Please. <laughs> Rather. <laughs> All right.